I'd like to start by thanking the organizers, mainly for organizing this. Thank you. Right. OK, I'd like to talk about uh, something that we've been working on for a number of years, fluctuation-dominated phase ordering. Uh, the results I'll uh, um, you know, approach towards the end have to do with the, the scaling of the order parameter. And this is work done with Rajiv Kapri and Malay Bandhupade. But as I said, the work has been going on for a long time. And Divyandu Apur, Kuntala, Manoj, Satya have been involved in this. And at least this bottom set of people are all, all going to be here in this conference. I, do, I don't think they're all here today, but uh, yet, but they're going to be here soon. OK. Now. Uh, yeah, so let's think about how we characterize order, uh, long range order, in any macroscopic system. And uh, in statistical mechanics, we learn that there are two ways to do this. One is that you look at a two point correlation function, and you look at two spins, for instance, in an Ising model, and you look at the correlation between them as you separate them further and further apart. And if you find that the correlation falls to zero, uh, OK, you say you don't have long range order. But if the correlation falls to a finite value, then you say you do have long range order. And that is one characterization of having uh, ordering in the system. On the other hand, you don't, look, you don't need to look at a two point function. You can look at a one point function. The one point function is just the order parameter. And most commonly, you think of it as the value that remains when the ordering field goes to 0. For instance, if you have an Ising system with green and red spins, and majority green spins, you'd, uh, you'd find that uh, you have ordering by looking at the total magnetization. Uh, so if you have a system with a conserved number of spins, then the order shows itself in phase separation. And the way you could <laughs> sorry. They have long range correlation, but you know, okay, so I'm, I'm saying long range order in the sense of as defined by, say, Yang or somebody will be there if, if the system, I mean, the correlation function approaches the finite value. I mean, so, but, but you're right. I mean, you might have long range correlations, which are power law decaying or something of that, but the long range order, I would say, is finite value. But um, coming, yes. What is the dimension uh, uh, variable? I mean, in this picture, it's two. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, no, no, in the sense it's a, let's say you can think of a two dimensionalizing model, I mean, as an example, but need not be, I mean. Uh, okay. Now, uh, the, the, all I wanted to say in this last bit here is that if you have a conserved, uh, number of spins, then they would phase separate. And the way you would catch the order is to look at uh, the first Fourier mode, for instance, of, uh, uh, of the magnetization, and that, that would sense it. Now, I'm going to talk about a sort of order that happens in a number of systems. This is called fluctuation dominated. And the way it shows up in the two-point function, for instance, uh, if you're looking, for instance, if you're looking at coarsening, or you could be looking at steady state properties, it doesn't matter. But if you're looking at coarsening, it shows up in the fact that a scaled correlation function, which obeys a scaling uh, in time, uh, has a singularity at the origin. This is a cusp singularity in this case. Uh, uh, and uh, this is, OK, something has happened to my symbols. They've gone at angles. <laughs> yeah, I suppose this is uh, my for not making this a PDF file. But uh, all right, never mind. Uh, so th th this uh, is the way um, uh, this fluctuation domination uh, uh, manifests itself in a two-point correlation function. The way it manifests itself, and this is more the interest today, uh, in a one-point function, like an order parameter, 
is through huge fluctuations of the value of the order parameter. For instance, uh, if I'm looking at that first Fourier mode in a, a conserved order parameter system, this is the sort of time series one gets. And one would like to know whether one can characterize this sort of order uh, well. Yeah. Uh, because of these fluctuations, distributions of the order parameter actually don't approach delta functions as you approach a thermodynamic limit. They approach very well defined uh, broad functions. Okay. Um, just briefly, I'll say that there are a number of systems which show fluctuation dominated phase ordering. The model systems that were studied right in the beginning had to do with uh, passive particles, pass particles driven by external fields, like, uh, uh, for instance, uh, um, particles on a fluctuating surface or passive scalars advected by a Burgers uh, fluid, noisy Burgers fluid. And there's a, some uh, bunch of uh, papers that uh, address these uh, sorts of problems. But in fact, this uh, phenomenon of fluctuation dominant phase ordering has been seen in a number of other systems and just quickly run over those. For instance, in active pneumatics, active pneumatics are uh, an example of active matter where the constituent, I mean the um, particles doing the activity are rods, for instance, and they're moving around. And uh, the first such study was actually done by Shraddha Mishra and Sriram Ramaswamy, um, where they actually uh, looked at the density being transported by a pneumatic uh, field. But uh, later on, a model of Chate, uh, um, uh, where the movement of the rods depends on the orientation, was analyzed in detail by uh, De, Das, and Rajesh. And uh, they found that the correlation functions and fluctuations, in fact, fall in line with the ideas of fluctuation dominated phase order. In an experiment on vibrated rods done by Narayan, Menon, and Ramaswamy, uh, giant number fluctuations were observed. Again, in this paper of De et al., uh, they reanalyzed the data and were able to pull out, in fact, evidence for a cusp in the correlation function from the fluctuation data. Uh, granular gases. This picture is, of course, not the work that, I, that saw the fluctuation dominated phase ordering, but I put it up just to remind you about granular gases. Um, the work concerned was this one, a uh, uh, paper by uh, Shinde Das and Rajesh in 2007, where they looked at inelastically colliding particles in one dimension but with velocity-dependent coefficients of restitution, and indeed they found uh, FDPO again. And the last uh, example I wanted to mention is this work of uh, Das, Pauli, and Madan Rao, uh, who looked at uh, a model of a, a, a cell membrane where you have actin filaments forming asters, and these asters pull in other proteins that are on the uh, cell membrane and will give you clustering. And this, uh, the nature of the clustered state actually seems to be of this variety as well. So all I wanted to say is that this is um, happening in several systems. Okay. Um, the model that I'm going to talk about now in the remaining time, it has to do with the first sort of model where you have particles that are falling in a potential which itself is fluctuating in time. And um, it turns out that if you just do this, things fall into valleys, but valleys become hills, things cluster and decluster. But the net effect at long times is to have long range clustering of some sort, which is this uh, phase ordering that I'm talking about. Um, here are the fluctuations again. So this is the main uh, point I want to address. And these are fluctuations in time. If you look at the Fourier transform of the uh, density, which with lo uh, long wavelength modes with uh, m equal to one, two, three, uh, uh, and uh, in, in fact for all k, what you find is a signal that looks like this for a given system size. And as the size increases, that any value of k, this is driven to zero slowly. 
but driven to zero. Nevertheless, for each value of m, not k, there is a finite limit that you approach as uh, l goes to infinity. And uh, the question we wanted to ask is, what is the meaning of this finite limit? And uh, what does, uh, you know, is there some connection between the different finite values? Well, uh, so here, in order to make that sort of a little more apparent physically, we looked at the time variation of all these Fourier modes. And what we found is that these fluctuations that happen uh, uh, are, in fact, there are fluctuations in all the modes, but they, there are definite correlations between them. In fact, they are anti-correlated, which they ought to be. Because if one Fourier mode dominates, the other one can't. But this is sort of significant because uh, what, what it says is that uh, when uh, the first Fourier mode signal is low, as here, the second or the third one picks up, and the order is sort of moved from this mode to these. But then it comes back. So here's a pictorial representation of what is happening. So here's space, here's time. Here you have one cluster, I mean, uh, here meaning here. And then as time passes, maybe the cluster breaks up into two parts. When it breaks up into two parts, your first Fourier mode won't sense it, but the second one will. And uh, well, it goes on and on. All right. So this is all I'm saying here. Uh, but the point is that the system actually cir circulates, therefore, in this subset of space of large Fourier modes, m equal to 1, 2, 3. But uh, it never goes into a disordered state, and it spends a finite fraction of time in each one. This is unlike any other sort of phase ordering. You might imagine that if you have phase separation and you break up the phases into two, you have to pay surface tension cost, which will cost you infinite energy and a thermodynamic limit. Not so here. Uh, question about scaling with the mode number. And it turns out that there's very nice scaling properties of these uh, uh, Modes, for instance, uh, yeah, so these arrows have done, uh, played a little bit of havoc here, but there's a scaling form. I mean, uh, this is L raised to phi, or L to the minus phi, and so on. Uh, and uh, all these curves collapse onto nice single curves in different, slightly different models, and there's good uh, evidence of scaling there. That was with the means. The same thing happens with the full distributions. There's good evidence of scaling with the full distributions for larger values of the Fourier modes, not for one and two, three onward, let's say. I mean, roughly speaking. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that you had these times spent by the system in different modes, you know, one, two, three, et cetera. And these are related in a simple way through this uh, sort of uh, uh, power law, uh, uh, yeah. There's a relation between one, one point and two point uh, functions, and that leads to a relation between the uh, this falling exponent phi and, uh, and the cusp exponent there. This was pointed out to us by a referee uh, of our paper, but uh, uh, it holds approximately, at least, for some of the models. OK. Uh, dynamics is also interesting. There's intermittency in one of the models, but I'll go ahead and conclude by saying that this fluctuation-dominated phase ordering is a sort of a new and interesting sort of state. It seems to arise in many situations. Its characteristic is really giant fluctuations in one-point functions, cusps in two-point functions. Um, and the thing is that you can't deal with a single order parameter anymore. You have to deal with a whole bunch, infinite set. Actually, you need to really, even that is not enough. What you need to do is look at joint probabilities because of the anti That we haven't done, but uh, uh, you know, uh, one should in principle. There's intermittency in the time series, and uh, something that I didn't talk about about today, I mean, uh, is uh, what happens if the particles are actually non-interacting pure, purely. And it's even more interesting, it's sort of clustering with very divergent functions, uh, very singular functions, scaling functions, they diverge. Thank you. Questions?
Actually, for would you want your the low dimension system big reasons ki coastal established transitions occurs for the phase fluctuation phase collision of the system. What is the relation with it? Um, well, uh, yeah. So at least if one looks at the conventional order parameter like magnetization in the coastal established case, then of course there are power law correlations, but no long range order. Here, what I'm saying is that there is long range order, but it's of a sort that sort of keeps changing in time. There's always, in any, at any instant, there is long range order, but the character of the long range order changes in time, unlike in a costalist thousand system where there is a long range correlation of fluctuations, but not long range order. Uh, I'm sure there is. I can't t tell you right now, but I'll tell you after conference. Do you think there is? Yeah. I, I think there is, yeah. So no equilibrium? Yeah, I think uh, not. I mean, uh, I mean, after all, with the equilibrium systems, we have theorems which say the magnetization exists, meaning that uh, there is a delta function distribution of the magnetization at, uh, you know, at infinite size. That's not true here. You know, that sort of. So, 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 what fluctuations? What? Giant fluctuations. Which fluctuations? Giant fluctuations. Yeah. Are yes. Uh, the case slower than one by square root of L. Uh, no, I mean, for me, giant is when they are of order L. I mean, the fluctuations are as big as they may. Yeah, but okay, you, you could have another definition of giant. I don't know. I don't think so. I, I, okay, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I mean, if yes, they're very dangerous. <laughs> right. Then, order, order parameter as a function of space, as a you know, like the probability distribution is a functional of the distribution function. As a function of space, I see. So do a cost graining and have, well, the order param par parameter, as I'm thinking of it right now, involves Fourier modes, which are, you know, sensing system size. But uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's an interesting way to think about it. I mean, have cost graining volumes and think about um, hmm? scale functions. OK. Yeah. You're Probably right that in any one region also this is happening. So, yeah, uh, I haven't done it. Okay, with that we conclude the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, that concludes the first session of the talks, and uh, we are running ten minutes late. Okay, let's uh, thank the uh, session chair for uh, this. Hmm?